Uh, good morning, everyone. One person answered. OK, so cool. You're listening. Uh, one person's listening. Cool. Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to talk about Signet. I tried to do Well, I was supposed to do it yesterday, but as you all know, that uh, resulted in bandwidth limitations. So um, how many of you have Signet right now? OK, well, OK, how many of you think you have Signet now? now? How many of you downloaded something yesterday? OK. Uh, so Docker users. Docker. Uh, OK, and compile yourself. OK. Uh, so I think we have like about 10 people. Well, the people who compile yourself, I think that you're going to be able to do this. The think people on Docker, I think that the Tel Aviv um, network is going to give you problems. Uh, unfortunately, but uh, if you have your own Wi-Fi, you can use that, and that should work out of the box. So, um, how heavy is it? Like in terms of bandwidth? The the signal itself? Yeah. Uh, it's like a kilobyte. Yeah, you're fine. It's good. Um, so, um, right. So, Signet. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what it is. Um, this is the agenda. You, you all probably saw these slides anyway, so, uh, but I'll go through it real quick. Um, so why Signet? So there's, in, there's a thing called Testnet in Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin actually has, well, two networks. Uh, mainnet, which is where actual money is being transmitted, and Signet, uh, sorry, and Testnet, which is where people fake and tr trust to try things out. The problem with testnet is that it, there's, there's problems with testnet, uh, and that's why I want to introduce Signet. Um, and uh, some of the problems is that testnet is actually just an incentive problem with testnet, in that you have to actually mine blocks on testnet for it to work. But why would you do that uh, when you don't get anything out of it? So mining is like this altruistic thing that people do randomly because they feel like it. Uh, so you have these like bursts of blocks and then you have nothing for like a week. Um, so that's not really ideal testing grounds to test something that you want to try on the mainnet. Because you have your own, you build your own wallet, and you're like, okay, Satoshi said six confirmations, so I'll try that. And then testnet comes along and makes this 10,000 block reorg, and now your wallet's broken. But is that because your wallet is broken, or is it because testnet is broken? Then, you know. Anyway, um, so testnet has this problem with block reorgs happening and being unstable and people doing crazy stuff. Um, so it's not very useful for people, especially if you want to do something long term uh, that you're testing on, on mainnet. Uh, and reg test is a uh, third thing you can do, uh, but reg test is just a regression testing network. Uh, it's not a network at all, actually. It's just a, a thing you run locally on your own machine. You can connect to other people on reg test to make a network, but anyone at any time can just replace the entire history of your, of your network. So that's not very useful. Um, so, so Signet also has some pro positive things that you can do with it. Um, you, you can have uh, any number of Signets. You can create your own Signet anytime you want. You want to try Taproot? Yeah, sure, add Taproot and, and build a Signet and, and start distributing the parameters to people and they will all be able to join your global Signet. Anyone can do it anytime they want. Um, and uh, there's software, well, tools that are being built for it. Like there's a faucet you can set up. In fact, I have one here, but I don't think it's going to work uh, because of the network. But we'll see. Um, there's, explore, there's an explorer, uh, and, and there's going to be this thing called a double spend as a service, where you can say, hey, take this transaction, and then take this other transaction. Uh, and they are conflicting with each other. They both spend the same inputs. And the, the Signet, system, the signet uh, well, server, I don't know what to call it, the sig Signet will mine the first transaction for you. And then a few blocks later, it's going to reorg and mine the other transaction in a different chain. And uh, you can test your wallet or your um, exchange software, whatever you're running. Uh, you can make sure that it actually deals with reorgs uh, in a global network, in a global setting. Everyone sees the reorg happening. So, um, but, but yeah, so you can do that. And that's actually kind of implemented. It's just not. Uh, a public s interface yet. There are scripts that, that do this. Um, so what makes it special? It's 100% centralized. This is not a decentralized 
uh, network, like, like, like Bitcoin. It's, it's run by one or several people. They are the ones with the keys. If, they, if, uh, if someone else tries to mine on this network, their blocks will be rejected. Only if you have a signature on the block, uh, uh, that block is valid. So, um, so there's no, uh, there's a very like, uh, it's a controlled environment in a way, which makes it really good in comparison to testnet because now you have some person who's saying, I'll, I'll take care of it, uh, or some people, and they will mine blocks kind of regularly, and if you ask them to reorg, they can reorg for you, and they can do all these things for you. Um, and this is mostly going to be automated, so you're not going to have to actually ask someone. You're going to go to a website and fill in and add your transactions or something like that. Uh, but everything else is exactly the same. It's like running on mainnet, except you're running on this centralized thing. But it's a testing, so that's fine. Uh, so I want to try it out. We have some tasks. Uh, first of all, the guys who have um, compiled, I encourage you to install Tor. Uh, without Tor, you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, Tor is, I think it's like 60 megabytes or something. Uh, if you're on Mac, brew install Tor. Do not use the Tor browser. Uh, you can have both installed at the same time with no problems. Uh, so brew install Tor, and um, if you're on Linux, or if you're on Ubuntu, apt get install Tor, I think. I don't know. Um, you'd have to look it up, but... That's more complicated. On Ubuntu, you should Google it, because there's okay. a bunch of, like, add this repo, check signature, but it's super easy. Okay, it's super easy, but Google it, so... <coughs> Um, so anyway, I want, I want to try doing things with you guys. Uh, it's not going to work in some of these cases because of the network being very restricted here. Uh, if you really want to try it out, you can do it outside somewhere. We can, we can go and... We can open your hotspot if you want. Uh, oh, we can do that, yeah. We can open the hotspot. Um, I don't know how much time I'm going to have, but if you want to play around with it more, we can gather up and, and, and play around with it later. Um, so if you're, if, you're running the, if you're running through Tor, if you proxy to Tor, all you have to do is type proxy equals localhost colon 9050, I think, or 9051, uh, if you have Tor installed and running. Uh, then you can all connect to each other, uh, I think. Actually, if you have a Tor hidden service, you can do that. Uh, but that's not complicated either. Anyway, um, so there's a section for compiling Bitcoin Core. I'm not going to go through that. If you read this yesterday, you may have been confused. Uh, I have the slides are kind of the switching between Docker version and a Bitcoin Core version. So if you do everything here, you're going to have both a compiled Bitcoin and a Docker Bitcoin, which is fine, but I mean, yeah. Um, so I'm going to skip some of this stuff here because we have, um, well, I mean, yeah, some Docker users were like sudoing and stuff, sudo, Docker run, whatever. I don't think you should do that. You should just add yourself to the Docker um, group because I think that that would just let you use it uh, automatically if you're on Linux. If you're on uh, Mac, I think it just works. Uh, okay, and so let me see here. Uh, so yeah, so if we get to this point, then we have uh, we have a signet running, and so there's a faucet. But the thing is, there's the default faucet globally, uh, which will give one of you guys <laughs> Bitcoin, uh, signet coins, but I uh, but it's not going to give anyone else because it's DOS, uh, it's it's like it's got um, th the throttling. So one IP, one day, one time kind of thing. I do have a faucet running on this machine, but as I said, uh, the network uh, is probably not gonna uh, let that happen. So, um, but okay, so I think that we've gotten this far. Who, uh, so who's, first of all, only the people who are actually trying to do this. Um, have you gotten this far? Have you gotten everything installed? And um, have you started up? Okay, you got it running. Okay, so some people got it running. Cool. Um, let me see here. Right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how many of you have peers? Uh, the people who have connected. Let me see. Okay, I'm just going to show you here. I'm starting Tor up there. I'm going to kill that. 
And I'm starting Bitcoin on this side here. And um, it will assumably use Core. As you can see, it's getting outbound connections. This is kind of tiny, but um, if you were running on Tor, you're, you will see connections and stuff. It will work. If you're not running on Tor, you will see zero blocks and zero peers. So uh, I'm just going to take like five minutes and uh, go around to people who are actually trying to do this and see if we can make it actually work. So, can yeah. Can you explain why we're going through Tor? Um, oh, yeah, OK. I can do that. Does someone understand why we're going through Tor without me explaining it? OK, three, three people. OK. Uh, so the reason we're going through Tor is that Tor actually doesn't give a, give a damn about uh, firewalls. Oh, OK. Yeah. So you mean the university? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, that's one reason. Um, and why doesn't Tor give a uh, damn about firewalls? Does anyone know that? Why? Well, it's protocol obfuscation. What's that? Protocol obfuscation, so that your IDS cannot see it. Well, so the people who are able to connect here out, um, was outside of, of, well, yes, that's, that's true. Th these peers here are probably on the global network. They're, they're probably not in here. But if you have a Tor uh, hidden service running on your machine uh, set up with Bitcoin, which is pretty easy to do, then I can actually come inside and, and, and connect to your tour, uh, to, to, to your node, even though Tel Aviv network is blocking all of that. And the reason why I can do that is because you're actually going through Onion to some random node somewhere, uh, which is connected to the internet, and your connection in, in, in from that node is going, well, your connection in is going through that node as well. So, um, so it just magically works, because that node doesn't have that firewall that Tel Aviv network has. So even though we have a really, really strict firewall here that even blocks me from video calling my wife, um, which I was very sad about yesterday. Uh, I can't video call my wife, well, my wife, but we can run a, 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 a Bitcoin network in here, which is pretty amazing. So anyway, who's, uh, I'm going to take minutes. Um, how many do you have? So what's the latest block? Uh, the latest block is block number 3353. Three, three. No, 3354. Three, Three, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Three, three, four, zero. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe increase block size. Increase, increase block size? Oh. oh. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Brian, you traitor. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, actually, I don't, um, because I started late, I actually ran out of time right now, I realized. I don't know if Anton is actually considering that. Or if he's giving me the extra minutes that I have because my, my boss over there was going lime and didn't listen to anyone. He was just going, <laughs> we were like, we're going we're gonna to go here. He's like, Poo. so we had to go get him. Anyway, um, all right, I'm, I'm going to actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to end it here. And I'm going to go around and, and until the next speaker starts talking, I'm going to go around and, and poke you guys uh, and see if I can get you to run this with me. So who's trying right now and failing? Failing, yeah, failing, failing. Are you, you're not sure? Okay, I'll, I'll come to you. So, who else? Is there anyone else who's actually trying? If you're not trying, you should try. You should try. Let's do right hand for trying. No, no, no. Let's just, let's just end this here. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave this here. Uh, and um, if I see, oh, here, we have two, we have two, two tour relays here. Full relay, I think. I think that means that they're tour, maybe. Let me see. Right, yeah, no, I'm just gonna. Oh, look, we have, a, we have an onion here. I think that may be actually someone I know, but anyway.
Oh, we have another onion. Sweet. OK. Um, if anyone's ever done this on Windows, um, that's a good question. Um, there are Docker images for Signet. So in theory, it shouldn't be hard, except inside of this room, because Tel Aviv University is blocking even me from calling my wife. <laughs> yeah, so I see I have two Onion, uh, well, Tor connections here. So um, the way to actually do the Tor stuff in Bitcoin, Bitcoin D is actually super easy. What you do is you add, well, you, can do, you have to uh, make a connection to the Tor daemon from Bitcoin itself. So this, you can either use a cookie or you can use a password, kind of like how Bitcoin also has a cookie or a password, the RPC password or RPC auth thing. No, wait, that's something else. Anyway, um, so you can, you can connect to the Tor system from Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin will create an ephemer, eph ephemeral, I think it's called, um, Tor hidden service, and then it can relay that to whatever peers it has, and then they can find it from the outside. So it's actually pretty automatic and cool. Um, All right, since you all insist so fervently, I'll continue a little longer. So um, if someone actually is running uh, this, I will, I will give you some coins. So um, on Slack, just send me a, an address just to get new address. You can, uh, wait, yeah, this thing here. Just to get new address, if you want to be fancy, you can do get new address, code, code, bech32, bech32, bech32. Batch 32, I don't know. And then put it on Slack and I will send you some coins. This is the wrong chat. Is that? Yeah. Uh, whatever you want. If you want to give everyone in the world your precious address, then. General is fine. There we go. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, hang on. Uh, okay, I'll send a tiny amount. I think I have some here. Oh, I don't. Wait. Okay. Hang on a second. What am I running here? Running. Wait, 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 wait. That's not going to work. Okay, I'm just going to. All right. <laughs> okay, I got, I got coins. Uh, so um, I, j uh, I just uh, did. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. I'm not gonna send you real coins. I know you're trying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll. Maybe I'll. Uh, yeah. I'll send you some Bcash later. I know. Okay, um, so I don't know if you realize what's happening here. It's just kind of tiny, but uh, well, actually, let's do this. Um, so here, I called the the, the getcoins.sh file, and it sent nine B, nine well SBTC. It sent nine signal coins, and here you see that uh, at the wallet, there was this um, so this transaction appeared here, and if I go online and I go to um, What's the word? Explorer, thank you. I go to the Explorer and I look for this transaction. It's unconfirmed and it saved 26% some fees. How about that? So, um, so the Explorer is seeing my transaction even though I'm, I'm running local, locally here. So this is kind of how, this is kind of the fun part about Signet. You can kind of like just interconnect through scripts and stuff uh, in ways that's kind of hard for regular testnet or mainnet because it's controlled, so you can do things that you can't normally do. Um, and once this is mined, I think the last block was 37, so wow, okay, that was a few seconds ago. Oh, okay, so 
I would assume that this is mine now. Yeah, okay, one confirmation. So I got it. And if you see here, there's an update. So when you get when you get when you see a transaction that's not confirmed, it, it, it shows up all. Well, assuming it's unconfirmed, it shows up as new. And then when it's later confirmed, or if it's double spent or whatever, you get an update like this. So add to wallet, add to wallet twice here. Um, so now I have coins, so now I can send coins to someone. I hate this keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna. Sorry, I'm sending 0.1 now. Oops. I know. I don't have that many. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'll try to send to. I'll, I'll try to send to Brian. Where's Brian? Here's Brian. I'll try. It. It's not going to work, but I'll try. It's a good demo. Invalid. Uh, invalid address. Yeah. This does not accept Bitcoin. So uh, if you're seeing the uh, add to wallet message on your, um, on your console, then you should be able to copy the transaction ID and go to explorer.bc-2, um, I'm not sure. Uh, if you run the daemon, will it not What's that? If you run the daemon mode, where is the lock file stored? Oh, it's in uh, what, what, what like operating Linux. system? You're on Linux? Yeah. So it's in home.bitcoin slash Signet slash debug dot log. Linux. Dot Bitcoin. Did I miss? Oh, um, getcoins.sh is in uh, the Bitcoin, uh, the, the source folder for Bitcoin, the root source folder for Bitcoin, contrib slash signet. They have a bunch of scripts in there. If you run your own signet, you, ha you can do things like make blocks and, and uh, start an issuer or start a backup issuer. Um, I, one of the earlier tests for signet, we had a, um, like downtime of like one day because the issuer script, well, the issuer code was buggy. It was opening file handlers and not closing them. So it ran out of file handlers after a while. Um, and I didn't catch that for like a day. And people were wondering why the network was not running. So, but, uh, so now it has a backup issuer. So it looks at the blocks. And if there's no blocks for half an hour, it starts making blocks until it sees new blocks and then it stops. So. And we can't, and we can't get the coins because we haven't created the main signet. Uh, you cannot get, what do you mean? We cannot get coins. Oh, it no. Just, -uh, because we have not created them. You cannot get coins because I got, got coins. It's one person per day, uh, one, one IP per day. Uh, uh, well, one time per day per IP. So I got coins. But if you send me your uh, address, I can. Yeah, I have. Uh, Oh, did I not send you? No. This one? And the one below that. This one? Yeah. Oh, I, s I sent. Oh, I thought I sent. Okay. I did. <laughs> Here, here's another one. Um, we can look at this li li latest one. If you go to explorer.vc2.jp and you t put it into the thing, you'll see that it's unconfirmed here. Round payment amount. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, if you're paying someone, try to pay un unround payment amounts. Anyway, I think I think I'm out of time. I'm haven't been using this. Sorry, uh, I think I think I'm I'm actually out of time now. So, uh, but if you're interested in Signet, if you're interested in, in trying this out, if you want to get a thousand coins or something ridiculous like that, uh, then you can let me know. If I use my my Wi-Fi that I brought, then I can give you a thousand coins if you want, because there's like a hundred and fifty thousand or something on the on the miner right now. But um, I mean, it's pointless coins, but it's fun to have lots of coins, right? 
Um, so, uh, but anyway, if you want to, if you want to ask questions, if you want to try this out, if you want to add this to your, if you have software that is running on Bitcoin, please contact me and and we and I will help you figure out how to you do your stuff on Signet. It's not hard. In fact, if you're running on Signet only, all you have to do is change the the, the, the chain parameters. You don't actually have to care about the signature in the block. You just um, you just run and hope that you know, whoever's ma making the blocks is actually making valid blocks. Um, that's complicated, but yeah, it's not hard to run. It's not hard to use. Anyway, thank you. <laughs>